Let's pray. Eternal everlasting God, our Father, we do thank you for every privilege that you bestow upon us. We thank you for the privilege of preaching. We thank you for this place and this purpose. We ask now that you will allow your Satana glory to shower down upon us that we might truly be able to testify that this is no more than the house of prayer and that the presence of the Lord is in this place. Bless those that come seeking that they might be saved. Bless those that need comfort that they might find comfort and need a friend that they might find us to be friendly. Forgive us of our sins. Continue to bless us as only you can. Bless your word and reduce Charles Winston as a man and allow your spirit to speak through me. That I simply might be a conduit, that it might reach the intended purpose and shall not return unto thee void. Bless our laborers and those that are laboring or blessed to be employed that uh, we'll be our best selves and others will see Christ in us. God is so great, Jehovah. Use us. Let us lose ourselves as we find more of you in our presence and our praise. Yes. It's in the matchless, marvelous name of Jesus, who is our Christ, that I pray. And all believers say it, amen. 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 We also want to encourage you and ask you uh, to pray for S- Sister Sylvia Jones, the widow of Reverend Pastor Carr Jones, and for her grandchild, Cameron, as they seek and go through us, as we pray for other family members, pray for the Cheney family and other members of our family, our church families and our friends, uh, prayer can reach them. Prayer makes a difference. Pray for Reverend Douglas, Reverend Sandy Douglas, who who had the distinct honor of preaching his grandmother's funeral yesterday. Amen. We were able to take him and his family. We all went down on the van to uh, Uniontown to marvelous celebration simultaneously. Uh, they were having a funeral about a mile down the street of uh, one of my nephews by marriage, uh, my brother-in-law's uh, son, stepson, and uh, at the same time. So we were able to uh, do both as we split up. My wife went there and I stayed with Reverend Douglas to uh, be a part of this homegoing celebration of his grandmother. Amen. And his family asked that he preach the funeral, which is a signal honor. Amen. Continue to pray for him and to lift him up. Amen. 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 Those of you who have your Bible or have access to a Bible, I'm going to ask you to turn to the Old Testament book of Daniel. And I really threw the uh, technology folks for a loop. I told them it was the book of David. (laughs) I was listening to Henley on the monitor talk about David when I was writing down the subject and description. I wrote David instead of Daniel. (laughs) (laughs) The book of Daniel is the third chapter. And I'll read the 16th through the 18th verse for the conservation of time. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve Mm -hmm. is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, Mm -hmm. and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Mm -hmm. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, mm. nor worship the golden image mm-hmm. which thou have set up. Mm-hmm. God's word for God's people. Amen. Very, very familiar story, passages of scripture uh, found in the book of Daniel. Uh, there's so much contrast and information in the book of Daniel that set the tone and tenor uh, for what much of we preach and believe. Uh, I want to talk about uh, these three Hebrew boys who are sometimes dubbed Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. <laughs> and we want to tag this text, God provide Christ for our crisis. Yeah. God provided Christ 
for our crisis. The church has been tempted to wander down all sorts of intriguing byways in preaching, teaching, worship, as we search for the consensual worship experience. There is a ceaseless stream of eloquent rhetoric about God, mm -hmm. but our moral and spiritual affirmation uh, of the eternal does not match our means, method, lessons, le literature, and rhetoric. Uh, I was talking to a pastor, and we were talking about this pandemic. We were talking about church and preaching and policy and politics. And uh, he was simply amazed that we've had church every Sunday. Uh -huh. He simply could not understand how it is that uh, God has allowed us to continue in light of all of the rhetoric and the a pronostication about doom and destruction. Yeah. And how it is because we practice safe discipline, we practice some uh, measure of uh, protection mass, and we uh, socialize with some concerns for each other. And uh, many, many of us have been vaccinated that uh, God just honors, and this was the conclusion of the matter. God honors our faith. without any internal evidence uh, that we know. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus has been seen showing up yes. in the Old Testament, in the book of Daniel. And their delivery was not even knowing who Jesus was, yes. not have ever seen him, and there's nothing to suggest that God had ever told them that he had diversified himself with deity. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that there was a three-part triune God in heaven. Uh -huh. uh, they believed that God would deliver them. Yeah. They believed that he had provided whatever resources that they needed for their crisis. And so we conclude that God has honored our faith. And the book of Daniel tells us that God has provided Christ for our crisis. Amen. In great periods of prosperity and power, there have been tendencies to stir up an intoxicating mix of mind and ambitions of towering personality and powerful systems in our attempt to match the mind of God. Mm -hmm. This God-switching pattern has crippled our faith in God. Yeah. God-switching is not a formally planned action. It is not done by vote or resolution. It is a creeping ten, trend of distrust in the almighty God. Yes, sir. And an ever-growing reliance upon idols, uh -huh. things, and stuff. Yes, sir. All through the Old Testament, the prophets warned them, but they marched through the centuries transgressing just the same and spending an equal amount of time repenting. And each time they returned to God, it was with a spiritual limp, the result of their crippling encounter with idol gods. Yeah. <clears throat> if we analyze today's text from the book of Daniel, we will discover a fascinating story filled with drama and suspense that demonstrate faith in its purest, even though it's set in its ancient. Even in the Old Testament, Christ shows up yeah. in our crisis, mm -hmm. in our burning furnace, in our lion day, in situations that's more than we can bear. Yes, sir. Uh, the king of Babylon had captured the nation of Israel and had stationed troops to occupy his newly acquired territory. And among the captives were three brilliant young men. The king hoped that they would have the training and skills needed to keep this disenchanted Hebrew cool during the transitional period mm -hmm. and to further expand his expanding and spreading empire. King Nebuchadnezzar appointed these men over certain providence with the hope of capturing their interests and loyalty. He was indeed a masterful politician. Yes, sir. 
who hope to purchase their loyalty by appointing these three key captives to positions of leadership. But Babylon culture did not fit their Hebrew faith. They had the training and skills to perform certain duties, but the king could not discern that they were not totally orientated to Babylonian society. Yeah. The king was apprehension, apprehensive and suspicious. The king had authority, but he sensed that these men had power. Yeah. Authority is always at the mercy of power. That's why it is that the scriptures make us aware that Jesus had not only excelsior, but he also had dominus. Mm -hmm. He had authority and power. He would transfer some authority, but he kept the power. Yes. No one learned this lesson better than Peter. On the night Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, yeah. when Jesus reminded Peter, and I paraphrase, I have the moral and spiritual fortitude to fight this fight. Your sword will reduce my victory to a midnight brawl, mm -hmm. and I will die at the hands of an unknown mob. Yes, sir. He says, I have the power. I have the power to win the fight. I could call 72 legions of angels, yes. and they'll come fight my battle for me, yes, sir. but not my will, but God's will be done. Amen. So what Peter realized is that even as he drew his sword and cut off Malcolm, the Roman centennial ear yeah. that Jesus not only had authority, but power, uh -huh. that he could reach down, pick up the ear, and put it back on and create what's called perpetuation. Yes, sir. He was guilty of sin, but he removed the evidence. In order to convict me, Deacon Thomas, you got to have some evidence yes, sir. or a confession. So Peter's confession is he's the Christ, and that God has provided mm -hmm. Christ for my crisis. Yes, Nebuchadnezzar reached a point during his reign where his ego needed a serious lift. He needed a vote of confidence and a demonstration of his public loyalty. Yeah. The king erected a huge image of himself as God mm -hmm. and summoned all of his prince, governor, captains, and rulers to come and worship his in image. The king gave the opening address and outlined the procedure. Will you allow me the benefit mm -hmm. of my sanctified imagination? Right. These young men immediately discovered a conflict of loyalty. Yes, sir. They felt a mounting tension tugging at their heart. They could see an impossible situation developing. They saw a crisis emerging. Uh -huh. They could see that they were being maneuvered into a position where a critical decision would have to be made. The three young men must have whispered to each other in a guarded tone. They certainly prayed to their God. We are physically captives of this empire, but we are spiritually free. Mm -hmm. It may well be that we must demonstrate our Hebrew faith in this heathen land. They agreed we would not bow to his image. I heard them raise the question, how can we sing Zion songs in a strange land? And the Bible said they hung their harps mm -hmm. on the willow tree. Yeah. Yes, they, did. Uh, they were at that point before they got to that point of realizing that they needed an intervention. Mm -hmm. They needed God to provide a resource greater than Nebuchadnezzar. Yes, sir. They needed him to take the heat out of fire right. and to cool the furnace that had been heated seven times hotter than normal, yeah. but they agreed, no matter what the situation, in other words, come hell or we won't bow. Go ahead, These three men were ratted out almost immediately. The word was dispatched to the king. He had become greatly distressed. He knew that this was a situation 
that could not be handled by his army. Uh -huh. This act of spiritual disobedience would have to be punished. The king called these young men into council. And if we could eavesdrop for a moment and listen to the dialogue between the king and the three Hebrew boys, yes, I believe we would discover Nebuchadnezzar's argument. Mm -hmm. I believe he would say to them, I gave you young men choice assignments in my empire against the counsel of all of my advisors. You have a promising future in this empire if you can just adjust a little bit. Your nation has collapsed, and you men are too intelligent to cling to some strange concept of a God who did not act to defend your crumbling nation. I'll be happy to give you another opportunity yeah. to obey my order. Right. It may be that you have a language problem, uh -huh. and you did not quite understand the instructions and the procedures. Yes, sir. I'll give you another chance. I believe one of them would have said, and this probably was a Bendigo. King, we're quite clear right. on your command. Mm -hmm. okay. We're grateful to you for your assignment to our providence. And we have fulfilled all of the requirements of your assignment in your empire. Uh -huh. But your recent command and order has invaded the domain of an empire to which we have divine allegiance. Yeah. We are aware of the fact that your military power overwhelmed our nation, but it was done without God's permission. Mm -hmm. There's no point in giving us a second chance yeah. right. to switch our loyalty and worship you. Uh -huh. Our minds are made up. Made up. Yes, the answer here is not ours alone. It is written indelibly in our Hebrew canon. Yes, sir. I am the Lord, thou God. Yes, thou shalt have no other God before me. Yes. All right. yeah. We had to switch our physical position for economic survival. Yes, sir. But we cannot switch gods, All right. even in the most difficult crisis. Right. Uh -huh. Then they made public All right. the ultimate challenge. The God whom we serve is able to deliver us. The whole Babylonian Empire is tense as these three men defile the command of their baffled monarch. They knew the penalty for disobedience. They knew that they would be cast into the fiery furnace. Listen to the spiritual logic of these three men. We do not claim that he will deliver us, but we do contend that he is able to deliver us. We have explored the possibility that he may not choose to deliver us, but we have a kind of faith that will allow us to face your fire, and we are prepared to test the validity of our faith in your furnace. Our faith is non-negotiable. Right. If your furnace is ready, we are ready. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The faith of these three men revealed the character of their faith. They did not doubt the omnipotence of God, whatever position he might take in this situation. They were committed to God as the creator and sustainer of the universe. Uh -huh. Their will was lost in his divine purpose. They were determined, if our bodies must perish in flame right. in this heathen land, mm -hmm. we shall walk through it with our heads hanging high, All right. shouting praises to the God of the universe, yeah. that Jehovah is still God, yeah. and he's still able. The God whom we serve yeah. can and will yeah. deliver us. Yeah. God may not always intervene when we face the threat of certain fiery experiences in life. Uh -huh. A touch of flame may be necessary to dismantle what has shackled and bound us. Right. 
Sometimes it takes desperate measures to achieve real freedom. The purpose of God may need a flash of flame at times to sense his saints. The face, the fact, the faith to face fire of these three men live as an ageless testimony to the power of the living God. Many gods had paraded themselves through Babylon. It was time for the real God to act. Right. Jesus was dispatched uh -huh. to fan the heat out of the fire Amen. and air condition the furnace. Uh -huh. Then he waited for the arrival of the Hebrew boys. When the king arrived, a voice from heaven shouted, Will the real God right. of Israel please stand up? Uh -huh. And by his omnipotent presence, Jesus replied, I am he. Yeah. Uh -huh. Jesus and those three boys yeah. walked around in that furnace until the king repented. The unimpeachable authority of the word of God should persuade us today that God's people do not have to bow to an unholy system to live. Yeah. We must be prepared to take a bold and even a defiant stand during times of turbulent history. The day may be now for the majority of saints to take firm stands and affirm our faith in the eternal God. We need a faith that will teach us how to face the fire. We need a faith that can withstand the heat of rejection. We need a faith that is inspired by God's righteousness. Mm -hmm. We need a faith that is encouraged by God's voice. We need a faith that's sufficient to assure us that God is faithful, yes, that's genuine enough to enrich us, that's passionate enough to strengthen us. We need a faith that motivates us, challenges us, yes. feeds us, heals us, satisfies us, yes, comfort yes, us. Yes and will deliver us in time of our crisis. Yes. That we'll be able to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes. We need a faith that shows us with the preparation of the gospel. Yes. And that makes us assure that we wear the helmet of salvation. Yes. And that we walk as in peace. Yes. Do you have that kind of faith? Yes. We need a faith that would allow us to be hung up for his hang-ups. We need a faith that as we promulgate the king's constitution yes. and become commentators of Calvary, yes. we need a faith that will allow us to believe that even in the Garden of Gethsemane, yes. it was not his will, yes. but God's will yes. that sent him to Calvary. Yes, we need a faith that will hold on, that we'll be able to declare and testify, my faith is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. All other ground is sinking sand. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We need not faith for yesterday that's brought us through that saga, through that drama. We need now faith. And now faith is the substance, the evidence of things not seen and the substance of things that hope for. We need faith that it carry us through the fiery furnace. We need faith that it carry us through life. We need faith that will carry us through death, our death, the death of our loved ones. We need faith that will pick us up when we down, that will tell us to look to the hill from which cometh our help, for all of our help comes from the Lord. We need faith to be able to shout hallelujah when you want to just know that you just got to hold on for a little while longer. We need faith to say I trust in the Lord with all of my heart. And I'm not going to lean into my own understanding. I'm going to keep acknowledging him. I'm going to call him. Anybody know him? His name is Jesus. What you say, Jesus? Jesus. 
Jesus. Jesus. I love to call his name. Every now and then, when it seems like the world is upside down, it seems like it's rocking and reeling, and I don't know which way to turn, I just steal away, and I call on his name. Jesus. 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 Sometimes, sometimes, it's a Bible, I just say nothing else. Just. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever called on? In the all right? In the all right? These boys was in the furnace. The king looked in and he said, I put three in, but I see four. God has provided Jesus for our crisis. Every now and then, the devil want to tell you that you're all by yourself. Yeah. And all of a sudden you look back and you only see one set of footprints. But they're not your footprints. That's because he rocked you in the cradle of his love. He hides you in his pavilion. He picked you up and carry you where you can't take yourself. He will no longer have the strength to go on. He said, come unto me all you that labor and a heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He gave us, provided for us, Christ for our crisis. There are some folks that know what a crisis is. It is more than you can bear, and doctors can't help you. They can prescribe stuff and they can give you some pain and leave you, but you know you need Jesus. Jesus. And there used to be a fellow at our old church. He used to come by and have his prayer well. He came in my room. And when he really get excited, he can say, in my room. Jesus ever came in your room? Didn't, didn't have to open the door? He shows up in our crisis. If we have faith, he honors our faith. He showed us how to die. He came from heaven to earth to show us how to go from earth to heaven. He died. He was hung up by our hang up. They nailed him to a cross. They pierced him in the side. They revealed him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. But he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. He laid his head in the locks of his shoulder and he gave up the ghost. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And God provided Christ for our crisis. He came to seek and save those that are lost. And that we might have life and life more abundantly. There's somebody here today that ought to trust him. There's somebody here today that ought to try him. There's somebody here today that ought to come into his counsel, come into his presence, and declare, I surrender, I surrender, all to thee I give. I surrender, I lay it all on the altar of sacrifice. The doors of the church open. This is invitation to discipleship. Whosoever will, let them come. Come without money. Come without price. We stand with our hands open. We stand with our hearts open. We're saying to you, we want you to come. Pastor, ministers, and deacons alike, on a united front, all agreeing that God will provide Christ for your crisis. It doesn't matter what you're going through. You said you were going to go through it. You didn't say you were going to stop in the middle. You didn't say you were going to turn around. You said you were going to come to through. So we want you to come to Jesus. Just as you are. I came in here really wounded and sad. And I've been here in the resting place. 
and he has made me glad. There's somebody that would trust him today.